Hi guys, I'm Tyler Lawnen, Chief Analyst of Cabot Small Cap Confidential and Cabot Early Opportunities, and I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. I'm recording this just after 11 o'clock on Friday, uh, February 25th, and it's casual Friday here in Vermont. Um, we're up for the weekend to ski, and are off this afternoon to go see an Olympic silver medalist, so that's exciting for the kids. Um, but back to the market here, so clearly interesting week. I mean, the market was closed on Monday, sold off Tuesday and Wednesday. Then we had Russia's invasion of Ukraine, uh, and Thursday's pre-market activity showed uh, the NASDAQ was down well over 3%. It was down 3.5% at one point in the day, but then closed up 3.3% yesterday. So clearly there's nothing normal about a 6.8% swing. Um, one positive we are seeing is that um, investor sentiment is way down. By now, everybody knows that growth stocks are in purgatory, kind of an important you know, psychological milestone in order for that area of the market to recover. Uh, also, clearly, you know, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is bad on a human level. As far as the market is concerned, though, we have historically seen these types of events be a sort of by the dip type scenario. That was the case uh, in Afghanistan, the Gulf War, Iraq, uh, and Crimea. So we'll see what happens this time around. But it almost feels like some of that, you know, historical perspective has been getting out there into the market over the last two days, yesterday's reversal, and then uh, things are okay so far midday today. Um, we are also seeing a number of stocks, growth stocks, hold on to their January and early February lows. So uh, fewer new stocks hitting fresh lows is a good thing. And of course, yesterday's reversal does feel good, at least uh, in the short term. So beyond all of that, though, clearly it is a weak market. The intermediate near-term trends are down. So continues to be a time just to, you know, Play it safe. Uh, if you're making, if you're taking new positions, you know, keep them on the smaller side of things. Um, be relatively conservative because I think more time is going to be needed uh, for the market to repair the damage that has been done. In terms of individual stocks, uh, I have a number here. They're kind of growth oriented, but let's get on to those um, after we take a quick look at the S&P 600 index which I talked about last week. Uh, I mentioned that we have seen some money. Um, data from Bank of America has shown more money flowing into small and mid cap stocks over the last seven to eight weeks. Uh, and, and small caps are trading at a pretty significant valuation discount relative to large caps. So big picture, I think the, the uh, small cap space looks pretty interesting for the year uh, and just looking to see continued support around this 1230 level which we saw yet again this week clearly it's important impossible to predict when this could you know move significantly higher or break out I'm not calling for that i'm not going to put a timetable on that uh, but again big picture i think that the setup for small caps to outperform uh, in 2022 and into next year is relatively solid so Keep an eye on small caps is the message. Moving on to the individual names. So let's wait for the software to catch up here. All right, first up is Inspire Medical, ticker symbol INSP, market cap of $6.5 billion. So they have a uh, device that's implanted to treat sleep apnea. Uh, it's been relatively solid performer definitely a growth stock revenue was up 70 percent in the last quarter uh, shares are 18 percent off the high but that was the run in october um it's been you know more or less churning sideways for most of the year but i do think this is one of those stocks that when investors come back to medtech uh, inspire could do well so keep that one on your radar moving over to energy stocks i talked about Cactus last week, ticker symbol WHD, market cap of $3.6 billion. So they sell uh, and rent wellhead and pressure control equipment to onshore U.S. oil exploration uh, and production companies. And they're having a great time, of course, with higher oil prices. The outlook for use of their equipment is pretty solid. They are also starting to ship more overseas. Um, stock has weakened a little bit over the last four, five, six sessions. Uh, 
Oil prices, of course, are kind of jumping all around based on what's going on overseas. Uh, but if you're looking for a small cap oil services company, I think Cactus could be could be a good way to go. Moving into pure growth again, uh, we have Snowflake, ticker symbol SNOW. You guys know this company, uh, market cap of 83 billion. Bring this one up because it's just one of those names that I think a lot of investors want to own. It's just a matter of at what price. And um, we are seeing thus far Snow be able to hold on to these uh, lows of 233 from late January. So that's a positive sign. Um, you know, a breakdown below 232 is clearly bad for the stock. But so far, uh, yesterday, the stock was able to hold up. So I think that's a good sign for Snowflake uh, in the near term. Moving on to GitLab, ticker symbol GTLB, more of a recent IPO here, market cap of around $8 billion, came public uh, in mid-October. Definitely a high growth name. Growth uh, Revenue growth was 58% in the last quarter. Um, they have a platform for managing code. It's one of those companies when you get into it and you read more about it, it you know, big picture, you could see this company being significantly larger, multi multiples larger uh, five years out. So clearly it's, it's a little early to the public market. Stock is pretty weak right now, but it is holding on to these lows. Um, I think it's an interesting name, high growth name. Uh, and if you're looking for something that, you know, you're looking out a few years, uh, that could be a big winner. GitLab should be on your list. Moving on to Concentrix, a more conservative growth name here, a little bit of value as well, pays a half percent dividend. Talked about Concentrix last week. Um, software for uh, enterprises to manage their customer experience. They have a whole host of solutions there. Um, again, it's a relatively conservative growth profile. Revenue was up 13% in the last quarter, uh, but highly profitable EPS, almost of $3. That was up 44% in the last quarter. And you can see the stock has been relatively solid. It's 6% off the highs. So if you're looking for a growth plus value name uh, in the software space, Concentrix could be the ticket. We'll move on to Altair Engineering, uh, computer software design, uh, computer software for design, uh, CAD engineering, um, digital twins, all that kind of stuff. Reported yesterday, had a good quarter. Stock has been relatively stable here in the 57 to 65 zone, um, and nothing's changed, you know, since the report. Uh, in this market, <laughs> software company being up 3% after reporting is not bad at all. I think when we look out into the uh, the future, a couple of years with what is going on with electric vehicles and and all sorts of other engineering demands. Uh, Altair is an interesting business. It is profitable. Uh, EPS was 19 cents in the last quarter. That was up 12%. But again, it's not like a huge growth name. Revenue was up 6% in the last quarter. Uh, that should improve though, going forward. So that's Altair. Doximity, ticker symbol D-O-C-S. I've been getting a few questions about this. Had a nice breakout on earnings here. Uh, market cap of around 11.4 billion and it's one of those um, names it's it's a software platform uh, for medical professionals uh, physicians doctors I kind of explain it almost as a combination of like LinkedIn slack and teledoc for doctors a way to network um, to maybe visit with patients um, and also to collaborate with each other Interestingly enough, all those platform companies I just talked about are doing really, really poorly, uh, but Doximity is doing okay, uh, especially when you consider the company just came public last June at 26, rose 100% the first day, and it's at $60 now. So all in all, of course, you know, it's 45% off of the high from, uh, let's see, what was the exact date here? September. But again, big picture, platform company, uh, doing relatively well, all things considered. And clearly, this strength after the earnings report uh, is encouraging. Last two names are uh, 
health oriented. So here we have F45 training company came public at 16 uh, in July. And I'll pull up the description if you want to read it yourself. You want to pause the video. Basically provides fitness services uh, with a whole bunch of different brands uh, all over the world. And clearly it's a bit of a going out story. Uh, stock is trading just a little bit below the IPO, but has come up nicely from the lows of November and December and worked its way through lockup expiration pretty well. So seeing a little bit of strength here. And I think uh, as investors continue to look for names to play the going out theme, hopefully a post COVID theme, uh, F45 could be, could be one to watch. Along similar lines, exponential fitness, ticker symbols, XPOF market cap, just under a billion. Pull up this description. Again, similar lines, recreation centers, studios, boutique fitness space. And somewhat similar to F45, stock sold off uh, in January just prior to lockup expiration, which kind of marked the bottom. And it's been doing well since then. Uh, at 20 bucks a share, the stock is up significantly from the IPO price of 12. Uh, and we should have an earn, earnings report coming up in the first part of March. So that's it for this week, guys. Uh, hopefully you have a good weekend and we get off to a better week next week. Uh, and um, situation overseas can improve hopefully somewhat over the weekend. All right. Take care.